Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amy Delaney and I'm an assistant professor of communication at Milliken University in Decatur, Illinois. In my research, I study health contexts, um, things like depression, diabetes, um, chronic illness, sexual health, and pregnancy. And I'm interested in interpersonal communication in those contexts. So I study how our communication with others affects our health outcomes and how our health status can affect our communication with others. So with that in mind, the paradigm that I align most closely with is post-positivism. I'm interested in associations among variables and identifying cause and effect patterns in communication in those health contexts. With that said, um, I've also studied interpretive methods. Um, I've done a handful of grounded theory style studies. And more recently, I'm also um, reading and thinking and writing about more critical frameworks as well. Um, one topic of um, personal and professional interest to me is the maternal mortality rate in the United States. Um, and that maternal mortality rate is actually really driven by a huge disparity between the experiences of Black women and white women. And so to study uh, this topic, I need to understand critical perspectives and how they inform our understanding of power um, in interpersonal and institutional settings, um, and also the history of racism in American medicine. Um, so even though I would call myself a post-positivist, one lesson that I would want students to learn is that you also need to be able to understand and think through the lens of other paradigms as well. In terms of methods, I most frequently use survey and interview methods. I also do some content analysis work um, on online discussion boards and support forums for people living with those illnesses and issues that I'm interested in studying. And I love doing this kind of research because it has really high ecological validity. Instead of asking people how they communicate about their diabetes, I can um, analyze these online discussion forums and see kind of in the real world how people are discussing diabetes in that setting. One skill that I think is particularly important for new researchers is the ability to read and understand the most important ideas in a scholarly article. I think reading academic work and empirical work um, can be really overwhelming for new researchers um, because it's not always the most like exciting and interesting um, prose. Um, it tends to be a little bit dry. Um, there's also a lot of jargon. The articles are often pretty long. Um, there's in a quantitative article, you'll find a lot of statistical information um, that new researchers might not be um, well versed in and able to quite sort through. Um, so I really want students to be able to build their skills uh, to be able to read an existing article and figure out what was the big research question or the hypothesis that was being tested. Um, how did they test that hypothesis or investigate that question? What were the key findings in their analyses and why do those findings matter? Being able to pull out that information through maybe more of a helicopter read or um, thinking about how they can read and, and sort through, right? What's a key idea here and what's the supporting information? Um, and that's a skill that can take a lot of time and practice to build as well. One project that I'm working on right now that I'm really excited about is about that maternal mortality topic that I mentioned earlier. And it's actually not an interpersonal project at all. Um, over the summer and in the fall of 2020, my research team um, decided to investigate um, how newspapers cover maternal mortality. Um, the, the way that I became interested in this topic was reading a really outstanding piece in the New York Times. Um, about um, one woman's experience in New York City. Um, and she lived, she did not die as a result of her pregnancy, but she did lose a pregnancy. Um, she had a kind of a near death experience. And as a mother myself, um, that was a really gripping story for me. And so I wondered, does all coverage of maternal mortality look like that? How, does, how do newspapers write about maternal mortality in a way that does or does not um, acknowledge the systemic racism that affects people's lived experiences? Um, and so my research team pulled about 200 um, newspaper articles from across the United States and we coded for several variables related to the framing of the story, um, the message features, um, 
and other kind of aspects of how news coverage um, talks about maternal mortality. And so I'm interested in that study and excited about it because it's a little bit different um, from the type of work that I normally do, but I also think it's a really important um, step in understanding how we can better meet women's needs in the pregnancy context. And then one topic that I think I could talk about for an hour or two at least um, when it comes to research methods is the importance of measurement. Um, and that's of course rooted in my post-positivist paradigm that says communication is something we can measure objectively or to some degree of objective um, measurement. Um, I think it's just so important. And this is a lesson that I learned um, really from my PhD advisor, Dr. Leanne Knobloch at the University of Illinois, um, because she would always say, you only get one chance. If people are going to give you the time to take your survey or sit down with you for an interview, um, or if you have a team of coders who are going to look at the newspaper data that you collected, you really only get one chance to measure the thing you're interested in measuring. And so if you find out after all of your data comes in that one question was worded kind of weirdly or that your response options really didn't line up uh, with the way that you were asking your questions or that your coding manual um, had a typo in it or um, your interview questions were too closed ended, whatever error you might make in measurement, you've really lost your chance. You probably won't call people back up and say, hey, I know you already did a one hour interview with me, um, but my questions weren't great. So could we do that again? Or you might miss out on um, having your coding team um, have another pass at the data because they've already seen it once, right? Um, and so whether you are using established measures or building your own new survey items, um, it's just so critical to take those steps to um, establish the validity and the reliability of those scales, um, to do extra pilot testing, always do one more round of pilot testing um, to try to tease out any issues or problems that might come up in measurement. Um, taking those extra steps to ensure that whatever yardstick you're using to measure the thing that you're interested in is a good yardstick, right? So thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you're all having a great semester and good luck in your research methods classes. Bye everyone.